Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan with your June and winter Climate Watch update brought to you by our business partners at IBM and ruralweather.co.nz. Well, we've had a very unusual May. We said that uh, at our last Climate Watch update that May was going to be not our usual month. Well, June is looking a little more normal. Temperatures are still warmer than average in New Zealand, but the rainfall is looking a lot more closer to normal compared to what we've been seeing over the recent months. So let's try and make sense of what is going on on the animated map for June 1st. Here is that big storm approaching New Zealand but behind it, not looking too bad, although the Southern Ocean getting to that point now where it's going up and down with one low pressure system after another. La Nina quietening down a lot more now as we go further in towards winter. And La Nina is where we start, with the Bureau of Meteorology saying we're still in La Nina, but only just. If you look at these um, average of international models over the months ahead, look at June, still just in the La Nina category. But by the time we're in August, it's pretty much into neutral, but only just. You know, if we were just glancing at that map there, or this, uh, this picture in the middle, we would be saying, okay, we're pretty much in La Nina. So even though it's fading out of La Nina, it's still very close to it. And that basically means that the sea surface temperatures are still a little bit above average in the tropics north of New Zealand. But it is certainly quieter than it's been, and La Nina not looking quite as strong. Just a Dig down a little bit deeper, and don't worry, we'll get into the forecast maps in a moment. But these are the international models, and this is June. So this is the area here where it's leaning towards the La Nina side, certainly not the El Nino side. By the time we go into July, almost all of the international models, except for the French one, are all into that neutral zone. So that's the reason why there's a fair amount of confidence that we are slowly coming out of La Nina. But as we go into the depths of winter in August, Again, similar to July, only one model suggesting that we're in La Nina, the rest are not, but none of them are leaning towards El Nino. And look at this, September, couple of models now pushing back into that La Nina side, and the values in here are all starting to lean more towards that potential triple dip La Nina later in the year. But we're still in the second La Nina for now. Now we've also got, separate to La Nina, we've got our own marine heat waves going on around the country. Now the good thing about this big storm that's tracking by is it's going to churn the water up a bit. So that might actually see some cooler water coming to the surface. But for now, many parts around the country are leaning warmer than average. That enhances the overnight temperatures, especially in coastal areas. All right, let's take a look now at the month of June and how it's shaping up weather-wise. So we do what we always do. We mark the big high pressure zones in red and the, bl the blue ones are low pressure. So what we're seeing here, kicking off on June 1st, the storm parked near Fiordland in the South Island, stretching all the way up into the subtropics with lower air pressure in the very corner of Australia where they've got some snow as a result of the southerly. But there's a lot of high pressure still coming in from the Indian Ocean and that's still tracking in across Australia. But we're noticing the center of these highs now going further northwards, and that's allowing the Southern Ocean storms to sort of go further northwards and also interact more with low pressure zones in the Tasman, and that's what we're seeing here with this very large area of low pressure as we kick off week one. Now by week two, there's another one. <laughs> that's not the same one, it's another one. So we're really in the breeding ground at the moment. This will be storm number three in just a week and a half to be in this exact same spot. So that's a sign that the highs have broken up a bit. We've been having these consistent, powerful highs, not just this year, but for four or five years in a row. So to be getting some lower air pressure uh, coming through, that's a good thing. It's encouraging more variety in New Zealand, and we can get a bit more rain going into Waikato and Auckland, the regions in drought. That would be very good. And also a positive for Southland, which has also been in drought and still sort of is, um, getting warmer weather. So pasture growth even at this time of the year, which is a little unusual. So week three, we were talking about the highs tracking a little further north. Well, when we get to the middle of the month and we're heading in towards the sort of the second half of it, high pressure from the Indian Ocean, high pressure from New South Wales and Queensland, high pressure uh, just south of the Cook Islands. So this is the cap, if you like. That's the limit. That's where the high pressure will be. The lows are down here. The storms are down here in the Southern Ocean. They'll try to come up, but these high pressure zones will put the lid on that and stop it. So. We're likely to see systems like this one here, where they come up into the New Zealand area, but they don't really go beyond it. So that's encouraging for rain in western areas like Waikato and Auckland, but it also could put more rain into areas like Taranaki and the west coast that have probably uh, had enough. But as you can see, as we head towards the later part of June, 
low pressure is dominating where it should be and high pressure is dominating where it should be. So this is a healthy looking weather map as far as I'm concerned, at least based on previous ones we've been talking about. So let's take a look now at the rainfall that's coming in. We just quickly kick off with the soil moisture levels. So we talk about Waikato and Auckland being in drought, also western parts of Northland pretty dry. The big wet westerlies coming through for the first week of June will help a lot in this area here and in Taranaki, although it depends on who you talk to in Taranaki. Some say it's wet, some say it's a bit dry. And then the other dry zone really is down here around south, south parts of Canterbury, coastal parts of Otago, and uh, even some northern parts of Southland still a little bit dry, just in that Gore area. So it's not looking too extreme, but this area down here may not be getting the relief, whereas everybody else will do. So let's take a look at the rain. Here's the first week of June, the departure from normal. And what it shows you is the most of the North Island and big chunk of the South Island is wetter than usual or about normal, which is a good forecast <laughs> considering we've been so dry for four or five years. Now the eastern areas and the southeastern corner, that's the area that leans drier than average. And the blue out here, those low pressure systems that are all tracking through. Here's the rainfall right up to the 15th of June, so the first half of June. We'll zoom in on New Zealand in a moment, but at a snapshot showing the big picture, you can see all of this low pressure in the Tasman driving in some big rainfall totals. So you're seeing 100 to 200 millimetres of rain along the North Island and the Western side. Like I say, we'll talk about that in a moment, but you can see the Tasman's full of rain, but surprisingly dry in coastal New South Wales and around Sydney. Also surprisingly dry up here to the north, and we say surprising because La Nina is still here, but it's only just here. And so that's why you're seeing conditions drying out now in these areas. And so therefore, New Zealand probably won't be seeing a lot of rainmakers to the north coming our way, although we can't rule it out, not yet anyway. And a close-up version of New Zealand, I mean, Waikato farmers, Aucklanders, Auckland growers and farmers will be happy to see that we're talking here around about 100 to 150 millimetres possible in this area for the next couple of weeks and a lot of that will arrive in the next um, you know first week of June so a fair bit of rain even bigger totals 300 millimeters plus for the west coast of the South Island but you just jump over the mountains and this area here with the pale blue one to five millimeters in the next two weeks so not much rain for the eastern South Island not a huge amount for wider upper although you do have spillover more so from the North Island, but that's the rain for uh, the June, at least for the first half of June. Let's now take a longer range look at this, thanks to IBM and the supercomputer Watson. This is taking a look at the next three months, June, July, August, that is winter for you. Good news in the North Island and a big chunk of the South Island, you're leaning a little bit wetter than average, but only a little bit. This is 12 millimeters in the green. That's not much more than average. You'd barely even notice that. So what we're seeing here really is normal weather returning to much of the country and southerners still leaning a little bit drier, but again, only a few millimetres drier. So really what we're seeing is a pretty good snapshot for the country. And it's a similar story in Australia, that rain more likely to spread further into New South Wales as we go further into winter. By the way, if you're wondering if these maps are accurate, because they always look a bit the same with the colouring, usually a bit of green and a bit of yellow, well, the reds and the blues, I should show it to you in the next month. When you take a look at somewhere like Papua New Guinea, it has the whole spectrum showing up. So the maps are accurate. We just live in a part of the world where usually our rainmakers, they don't linger too long. They're not like the tropical ones up around Papua New Guinea, which can deliver 300 millimeters in a short time. So our weather doesn't look too extreme heading um, into winter rain-wise. And temperature-wise, what we've been seeing for a long time now, a few years, in fact, New Zealand is leaning about half a degree to one degree above average for the next three months ahead. And the southeastern corner and Tasmania of Australia, southeastern corner of Australia and Tasmania, that's better English, um, pretty much the same as New Zealand, about average, maybe a little bit drier than usual. And look, it's wetter for inland areas. If you're up in towards the interior of Australia um, and Adelaide northwards, it's certainly looking a bit wetter. So the general picture is we're heading into a winter that's a little bit more normal, maybe. Um, certainly warmer than average, though. That is the one thing that we're noticing. That doesn't mean snowstorms are out. In fact, you add a southerly into some warmer than average weather, you can have a heavier snowstorm than usual. So we're not saying snow is not possible, but maybe the frost might be a little more limited this year. 
But the good news is, after four or five years of very dry conditions, we're finally getting a break in the pattern, at least in the Tasmania, New Zealand area of our weather map. That is all from me for Climate Watch this month. I'll be back again at the end of the month as we head in towards the month of July. We'll see you then. For more details, ruralweather.co.nz. Thank you.